Hey there everybody and welcome back. Well another little bit of a time warp there. For you it's been a week, for me it's been a couple of minutes. So I'm pressing on and uh, you can see what I've been doing just this morning is starting to bead blast uh, the cases. I got the bearing out of this and I uh, thought I'd start bead blast. There was a I don't know what it's meant to be. It's like almost like a a metal foil washer that was on. I don't know if you can see that. That was on there. So when I get a parts book or whatever, we'll find out what that is. I did the cylinder head as well. So I'm also going to do check which barrel's the best barrel. And uh, as I said, I'm not going to not going to use that piston. It's it's a pretty nasty piston. So anyway, first thing we're going to do. Is we're going to go and see about taking those couple of bearings off the crank and then we can stick that in some evapor rust and get rid of the little bit of rust that's there okay okay we'll try with this one I've put the spreader thing on uh, this is a spacer when I was sort of taking this apart I said oh look that's a nice face but that's a spacer to keep the two bearings on this side apart. So let's see what we've got here. Now then, you're watching me take this off. Last week's video was an hour and I wonder, I think I might have mentioned this before, which way should I do this? Should I do it a la Blue Peter, for those of you in the UK who know that, where I sort of say, you know, here's one I did earlier. In other words, something like this. I say, okay, I'm going to take these bearings off. And then the next tiny bit of video is me standing with them saying, okay, there they are off. Or do I show you doing the stuff? Because like with that last, uh, why did I put these bolts in? Different way around. Uh, like with that last week's video, as I put it together, I was looking at it and thinking, did I show too much here? By the way, it's still raining. It's Thursday. And it's literally rained since Tuesday. Actually, just a few miles away from us, they've got flooding. The last couple of days, they have trees down, the power out. All sorts of things, so we've been lucky, but uh, that feels as if it's coming off. As I say, we seem to have been lucky this time. Pond's overflowing like mad. The bottom of the lawns is completely underwater. I am going to turn you off. All right, I've got them nicely under there. It's starting to lift that up. So it should pull off now. There it goes. There's the spacer off, there's the bearing off. Okay. You don't need to see me take this off. All right, so there's a bit of corrosion, but that's where the spacing piece is. The bearing face there, and that one there I think will be fine. 
ましょうはい、we'll repeat the process on this side and then、oh, I've got all the grease in now and then bring you back All right, well, I won't not show you everything, so where's it gone? 21, 20, 16, 3 quarter, there it is. So, so let's see if this one will pull off as easily. There, there it goes. And there's that one off. That's absolutely perfect. All right. Very good. We'll stick this in some、uh, evapor rust. All right, we're back. So, actually, it's a couple of days I've been busy doing the stuff that I don't show you. So, for instance, I've、uh, I got all the bearings out. I've been busy bead blasting engine cases, as you can see, cylinder head. Ah,、uh, there's the crank. And as I say, that is, there's not a bit of play in that. And as I see the rollers go around, they all look very nice. So everything was going well. I stripped the front wheel completely. The spokes were nice. Every nipple just screwed straight off. Brass nipples, very nice. The rim's going to come up nice and clean, so that saved me a bob or two. I even、uh, got the brake plate. Starting to get that ready to paint, and the hub is next. And let me move you over. Cleaned the barrel, I did the inside, it's very nice, so I measured it. That is spot on standard. I mean, it's a 66 millimeter bore, it came out at 59.98. All sorts of、uh, different places to measure it. So I was really happy with that. So I went on and cleaned the whole thing up. And when it was all cleaned, Let me zoom you in. Whoop. Hold on one second. All right, you're back. Crack. Goes down there. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it goes right down there, and then it goes across all the way to this transfer port, and across all the way to this transfer port. So actually, That needs a new liner. So I thought, not to worry, got another cylinder. So, hang on. This cylinder is fine, except for the fact that this is a bit pitted. This one is going to need a rebore. I haven't measured it yet. In fact, I'll measure it now. But there's some, the pit, the worst of the pitting is right down here at the bottom. So that's good. Oh, the top is,、uh, isn't bad. The, the rusty part starts round about where the truck, the ports are. So, got to re ball that. So let me get the bits and pieces out and measure it. Right, I've been measuring this using the telescope and gauge up and down the bore, different places. This one is completely on standard. It's, it's reading 65.99, 65.98, that sort of thing. So, to get that re bored. I think it's too tall for me to do it in my mill. 
Steam Shop should be back from Florida soon. He generally comes back in April. So I'll get this barrel cleaned up and uh, see you've got to have no matter what people tell you, you've got to have a piston to do a rebore. So I noticed pistons came in two sizes, 15 thou over and 30 thou over. Why 15 and 30 and not 20 and 40, I don't know. But anyway, uh, we'll get him to rebore it to sort of 10 thou over and see if that cleans it up. And if it does, I'll buy a one size over piston. And uh, if that doesn't clean it up, then it'll have to be a two size over. Actually, where was I reading? Oh, just as I was looking at parts. I think Villiers, yeah, it was Villiers when I was checking that they had pistons. They, of course, are getting pistons made now and they're getting them made to, I don't know, about four times over. Because as you can see, I hope, this is a pretty thick liner. In fact, I'll tell you how thick this liner is. Let me change it over to inches. This liner is 140, 150 thou, right? So yeah, you could definitely take that out to 60 thou over, which is I think what they do. So it's not a big problem. <clears throat> it's just annoying. Um, I was going to, because they're standard bearings, they're like 6204 and 6304. I was thinking, oh, I could just get the bearings and the oil seals and build the bottom end up. And then I thought, well, I can't do any more than that. I can't put the barrel on without the piston and various gaskets and things. So I was going to wait, but I might get the bearings so we can build the bottom end up. And uh, be all ready just to put... A barrel on and what have you when we get to it okay so let's think of something else to do all right actually today is Monday weather's been going mad last Friday it was snowing it was just above freezing yesterday Sunday it was sunny and 60 degrees so I took the BSA B44 the new one out just to try it in a couple of sections it was so nice I carried on, I rode all 20 sections. That engine is really nice. It doesn't quite have the grunt of the end field, it needs slightly heavier flywheels. Maybe go look into that for the other engine. But it works really well. The bike as a whole does, but I was pleased with the engine. And uh, I've written to Charlie to tell him. The only thing that was slightly annoying to me was the clutch works so well I mean it's it's one finger that it was like a modern it was like clutch on a modern trials bike uh, so of course I can't be dealing with them there's too much lightweight feel in them but anyway what I was going to get at was Saturday this arrived which is the um, electronic ignition so that came from order to arrival in less than a week. Gotta get a new blade in this craft knife thing. Okay. Oh, that was, I thought it was gonna be more expensive than that. STK, it's heavy. STK 970 Villiers kit heavyweight. Whoa, 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 whoa. So if I get the bearings and oil seals, I could build the bottom end up completely, put the ignition on, because the other part of it is I'm going to order my rear rim from Central Wheel in the UK. Because Buchanan's who I use here only do one type of uh, chrome rim and they are unbelievably expensive. Even with shipping and everything, getting a rim from the UK is probably going to be half the price. 
and I got them from Central Wheel for the uh, instructions for the C15 you may remember they were nice rims nice spokes and everything uh, kill switch ignition coil hang on he's going down the hill and he's using some of you may know this what is known here I don't know if it's got a different name in the UK because I've never heard of it a jake brake which is like a decompressor apparently on the engine and they use it to slow themselves down whoa look oh hey this really is nicely done um there's the the, the thing look that the HT lead would come out of the cases I think nice 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 Get some pieces There's the uh, self-extracting bolt. I have read one or two places people who weren't happy with Electrics World. I don't know why. Everyone I've bought has been perfect. Well, as you know, with the, the BSAs, a couple of times we've had to uh, make spaces and things. But as far as them working... All right. So that is the flywheel. Can you see all this? Let me let me take the box out of the way. Put that there. Yeah. There's the stator plate. Look, very nice. There's the flywheel, the magnets on the inside. Now then, this other thing in here, this is the beauty of it, because this is the same for, as it is with the Villiers own ignition. Same for the motocross bikes, the scramble spikes, and the trials bikes. There is the weight to go on that. To give us some flywheel weight. Just the same as there's the original one. There's the weight on it. Excellent excellent really nicely made very good all right so I'll pack that all back up and put it to one side but I think that's what I will do I'll order bearings oil seals we'll build the bottom half of the engine up. oh we could, take, we could have a look at the gearbox next we'll have a look at the gearbox next all right, let me pack all this back up. Right, ho, oh, so gearbox. I'm gonna try again filming the front because I'm on the um, lift table and not on a bench up against the wall. I can film you this way while I'm working this way. We'll see. So anyway, I've given it a good washing paraffin, which is a kerosene to our American viewers came up quite nicely so as I say these gearboxes are built by Albion and you will see I'm not going to take the whole thing apart um because if these bearings in here are good we'll leave that as it is so we'll take this all this off check the operating mechanism we've got to change the sprocket but um unless absolutely necessary we'll give the inside a good wash out as well so as I was saying um, Albion uh, we probably won't be able to see it. before I'm done I'm going to show you a picture 
out of parts. Oh, I found a chap. Uh, I used to get all my British parts here originally from a chap or a company in Canada called Walridges. Mike Partridge, I think his name was. He was a Brit. And one of the things he sold was uh, a series of DVDs which were collections from a chap in Australia. Can't remember his name. Who would put together DVDs with sort of got a lorry coming. All of the uh, workshop manuals, parts books, service sheets, all sorts of things for each particular make. So I have one for BSA, one for Triumph, so on and so forth. Well, I found a fella who seems to be doing the same thing. And he had the parts book for the Villiers engines on PDF that I could download. And in fact, it would seem that you could pay what you wanted. I paid, you paid tight. <laughs> I sort of paid a dollar over the minimum. I think the minimum was $8.99 and I paid him $9.99. I paid him $10. So anyway, I'll show you the page that shows the internals because it shows the shift mechanism and you'll see it's exactly the same as the one in the Enfield gearbox. All right, so let's see about getting some stuff off this side. Now, we'll do this completely, which means it's one of those situations where uh, where I'll basically be filming everything. Oh, I meant to get some uh, yellow boxes down. And there's a screw in the end of this. Get my new little hammer out, look. Open those splines up. Now the kickstart spring goes into the back of this. That cover covers it, but it actually goes into a little, little hole, which you just heard. You see the little hole there? I'm going to keep jumping up to check that you're still in view. before I show you things which is going to you could do with being closer see the only trouble is if I bring you closer there's more chance of me losing you all right so there's the end of the spring that goes into the back of the kickstart and then that just the same on the other side of the spring see and that goes into a hole in the casing right so let's clean this off a bit so I don't get too clarted up right now then for the gear change We have a spring clip. Which is just too much for my, my uh, thumbnails. Get the right one of these. <laughs> See, I just want to spring it. I'm not a big fan of clips. Because <laughs> they always do that. You... 
you're just about there and then the bloody thing springs off particularly when they don't have little ears with holes in oh come on This is so... Ah, didn't need that. Is this another two screwdriver job, people? There we go. This is going to go right into another little groove here. We've got it out of one groove, but the whole bloody thing is just full of grooves. See, so now we're in another one. There we go. Another sight line check. Okay, so there's a little cover that goes there. Right, I won't bother taking this all to pieces because it's all mounted on this cover, so it should come off. Now then, <sighs> supposedly sun's shining today. Oh, didn't get to see the eclipse yesterday because it got really cloudy here. I wouldn't even have said it got particularly dark, but. Uh, here it turned out to be a non-event because I say it got cloudy which is annoying because Sunday and today which is Tuesday we got a completely clear blue sky but yesterday it was cloudy quite heavily cloudy I thought it was going to be raining actually because I was all set to go out riding again and uh, it came over very dark in the afternoon. Are you still there people? Are you still with me? I think so. Yes. So today, not only is it sunny outside, but it's supposed to be 70 degrees. So I am going to be knocking off early. I'm going out to ride and I think I'm going to take the B44 again. Might have to build a frame for that other round barrel engine. Got this one down to two, what was it? Do you remember? 230? Somewhere around there. 220 something? No, I think it was about 230, wasn't it? Uh, and that was with that standard BSA frame made out of double walled drain pipe I can't believe how heavy that frame is compared with say the oil and frame frame it's a lot heavier so we might further down the road build a frame for that and you know the flywheel has flywheels have two two holes in them About making up a couple of uh, brass plugs to fill those holes add a bit of weight to the flywheel because that was the only thing it just
Is that everything, Michael? Is that everything? Yes. Yes, that is everything. There's nothing to knock it with down this end. There's no edge. Starting to come away there. Oh, there's an edge there. There's a little edge there. So that I'm not on the joint face. hear from the sound of it that it's this is going to take a little bit of jiggling to get off so let me turn you off and no I'm not doing it because I'm going to jam a screwdriver in there I will do it very carefully but I don't want to take up too much of your valuable time so got that Rings and all sorts of things in here, look. Good dipstick even. And the gasket. I've started making a list of, uh, of engine spares. I checked on the Villiers website last night, they go up to 80 thou over on the piston, so we'll be alright. I seem to have everything I needed as well. So the only thing that's holding me up is knowing how big a piston I want. Because I don't want to order everything and then have to order a piston. Because obviously one of the big things we're getting stuff from the UK is shipping. Now there's been water in this. Because the dipstick, which is probably the uh, cheapest grade of steel in the entire thing, is rusty. So, there's a little bit of rust on that. There's a little double row bearing in there to support this shaft and that actually I'm going to print out the parts book so I can see what's going on I just want to check with you again so you're getting out of shot How's that? That's about it. So, here's the main shaft. There's the lay shaft. So this is the actual gear change. So. That. 
is activated by this pole the kickstart, oh that's interesting, the kickstart look is an internal helical gear and there's the part that goes inside that all looks very nice let me take that off there I'll take the spring off for now just so that goes on easily okay so that's why that's like that to mount the kickstart clever now as I was saying in here You know what? Must have been a different gearbox in the, the past book I got had all the models. So I was maybe looking at the three speed gearbox or something, but it had exactly the same sort of that weird old fork thing that the Enfield has. This doesn't. This just seems to have a plain drum. that slides up and down unless it's I really don't want to take all this out apart so I'm not going to Take some bits out, clean them, and I'll get all the gunge out. Okay, so that's that job to do. I'm not going to be bead blasting this. It came up nice and clean, but seeing as I'm not emptying the case out, uh, we're not going to bead blast it. All the gears look really nice, so I don't want to disturb any of that gonna need a new drive sprocket I think I can get actually a different second gear I think I saw in the Villiers thing that I could get main shaft and lay shaft pinions for a slightly closer second gear as they pointed out for to be of more use in uh, more modern sections but can you see that Only just, might not be even perfectly focused. That one stud, all the other studs are perfect. That one's got some rust on it. All right, that's enough about the gearbox for now. Well, these forks have proven to be a complete pain. I'm uh, sort of in one of those situations where video go where I'm cleaning things and bead blasting things. So I don't want to show them. So, I thought uh, I need to get these bearings off, off the bottom and off the top. Now I've actually broken the bearing off there, trying to get at it to see what's what. So one of the things you can do with the bottom yoke, if the bearings really won't come off, is, well, you can just see it, you drill a hole that you can get a punch in and tap the bearing off. Well, I've been banging away with a good sized punch in that hole. I know I'm all the way through, I'm up against the bearing. It just will not budge at all. I mean, it could be completely and utterly rusted on. So what I'm gonna do is break the rollers and everything off and heat that up and see if that'll do it. So, watch this space all right i've got it standing up in the vise i've broken the uh, the cage off so i can get at the center we're going to heat it up see if that will loosen it and expand it because don't forget it's a ring so it should get bigger
need to be our drill a hole on the other side as well to even out the uh, budging a fraction. Man. Sorry Graves, don't like these. Alright. So I've knocked it around to the side, you'll see it in a minute. I've cut into this with a cutting wheel on the grinder. And One around the other side now. It's moving. And now I can even get the punch in. So what I've noticed, let me do it. Oh, you can't see it big. Let me take you right out. These, look at that, they're incredibly flimsy. Without this top on, man. Just to say caught that. But that's what I had to do, look. To get it off. That's not going to bother that at all. Alright. Okie doke. So. That can now be set up ready to bead blast. I might take this down to the uh, the fellow that does my sand blasting for me. It'll fit in the cabinet but it'll take me ages to do it just with with bead. He can blast these clean in no time. All right let me show you something else. So I got these these are the wedges I got them both out of the one where I had uh, screwed them right out. You remember the first one I attempted? So because, because they drilled Where is that? Oh, tell me. They aren't drilled. They're 5 16th Whitworth. Uh, sorry, 5 16th BSF. There's the one on, on the other one which I haven't been able to get out. They're drilled to take a split pin. It's exactly the same bolt, but those bolts aren't drilled. So I'll have to drill those, put a little split pin in. I mean this isn't going to fall off but that's what it's for. It's, it's so, if that's screwed all the way down. So as you can see I've, I've run a die, uh, a tap through these and run a die on the bolt. So they're both nice and free. But I still have to get this bearing off here. 
so I guess I'll have to do it but now see I can't get into this one I drilled my hole and I very carefully measured to make sure I am on the bearing these are unbelievable all right let's press on well you learn as you go along don't you so this one I'd drill the hole through and because I didn't couldn't cut at an angle I just went up and down with the disc and ground it away and then actually it just popped off that sort of broke it off you can see it's not rusted they're just an incredibly tight fit on there all right so I'll clean this up bead blast it and that's all ready to go for paint all right well it's Saturday and I just popped out to uh, do this last minute to finish off the video because I can't do anything today um, I've done the hub the front hub the brake plate and that that's all ready I've got the rim all cleaned up so I can uh, Put that way together because i got to order tires for it uh because i thought to myself well i'll order the tires now i can put the front wheel on and of course got the rear tire they're out of stock of the front tire so we're waiting on that but i've got everything else uh what else well two little things yeah we're going to do repair on that broken piece there all right so there's that but for the engine we've come to a standstill I've got to clean this yet because we need to get this barrel board to find out what size piston we want and I can't get that done yet because steam shop is still frolicking in the sunshine down in Florida so if you're watching this get yourself back up here I mean I know it's only 36 degrees outside and it's trying to snow again but you're needed so as I say as soon as I get that done it's it's good standard bore at the moment uh, so I've got up to 80,000 we can take it out the, that pitting's maybe 10 or 15 fell I think we're we're gonna be fine so that'll be that and then I'll order all that stuff and uh, and buy it might be able to hit it. it's still <coughs> raining it's rained for days steam shop it's been warm but it's been really and uh, in fact before we go I'll give you a little story because I know you like little stories so Friday mornings I go to my friend Mike Comer's at the trial shop and he has a hot chocolate and I have a cappuccino and we sit and gossip so yesterday I got the jag out of the uh, little garage the Amish built and I have a place because it's a long drive here and there's trees on both sides so there's only a couple of places we can turn around so I backed out came down towards the workshop down towards that place where you see me riding reversed into my usual place to to pull out just would not move at all the tires just spun and spun and spun it had just got so squishy uh, and it's very slightly there I'm off the drive I'm, so in the end I have some big thick rubber mats that I have on either side of like by the mill and the lathe and by the lift table here and the ones by the lift table are about two foot wide and five feet long so I dragged them out got them under the back wheels and managed to get it out so it wasn't a good start to yesterday anyway as I say that's it for this week we'll do that repair next week I don't know what else I can do till I get this stuff for the engine should I just buy the bearings if I buy the bearings and the seals which I can get from my master car overnight I could completely build the bottom half of the engine uh, we have to tap a couple of holes to put the electronic ignition on so you'll see I'll do that if I order them over the weekend they'll be here Tuesday we can build the bottom of the engine We'll at least find some stuff to do next week because the only other thing is getting the frame sandblasted and painted which I don't really show you anyway and that's only a day's job so anyway that's it so you go off you stay safe 
and enjoy yourselves.